So rolling out of three and four. Spanky Hall quickly given that green flag. We're underway with our challengers. And it is John Meese jumping out to a good lead early. As Holden Hyman and, sorry, Noah Zimmerman are also battling him there on his rear bumper. Into three and four they go for the first time. It is Meese who's got the race lead. He'll lead lap number one. Heineman holding tight in that number two spot as they head down the front straightaway. Meese still holding off Heineman and add Dan Bittinger into the conversation as Heineman and Bittinger are door to door wheel wheels. They enter into four. Good battle here ongoing for the number two spot. It is the 32 of Holden Heineman on the inside. Now the 88 up top. Bettinger is trying to get around him. He does so. Takes away the number two spot as they head down the back straight away. Bettinger eyes on John Meese now as he is inching that length into about one car length as we have three laps down. John Meese now has a new contender in the Number two spot, Bettinger is there. Meese is in second in the points here for the Challengers class at State Line Speedway this year. He is trying to hold on to a good finishing position to maybe close the gap on Peter Volpe, who has the top spot in the points as the yellow flag is in the air. That is the X-10 of Bryant Goggle pulling it into the infield. Start zone, green flex in the air, we're back underway. And they come down straight away. It is John Meese who's got the race lead. Leads them back through one and two. A couple of the cars very sideways and holding on to the car somehow was the 28D of Tim Dragger. Now they head down the back straight away. John Meese still the race leader. Here, trying to reel in Meese as they will come out of four. It is still Meese but not by a lot after four laps. Meese holding on to that top spot. Bittinger is trying everything he can to get to the back bumper. Just about one car length of separation as they head down the back straightaway. Bittinger drives up to the top of the racetrack, climbs the ladder, tries the high line, but loses a car length off turn four down the front straightaway. It is all Meese up to this point, but add Noah Zimmerman in the conversation. Excuse me, Edgar in the conversation for, for, for third place, battling. 32 of Holden Heinemann as Heinemann will pull away. But there's about a seven car length, maybe eight car length lead between Bittinger and Heinemann for second place. They head back through turns one and two and onto the back straightaway. Bittinger to the outside. The two race leaders, they split the lap machine as they head through three and four. Again, they get around another lap machine. Meese on the inside continues to lead the way off turn number four. Meese sort of hit some lap traffic, could affect this. Deep in the door wide open for Bittinger as Bittinger is slowly reeling in Meese, getting that car length lead down about one car length. Bittinger ducks to the high side again through turns number three and four and on to the front straightaway. Meese with the race lead, still some lap traffic directly ahead that will have to be dealt with here before the end of this one. Now off turn two and down the back straightaway, Meese opens up his lead again. It's about two to three car lengths entering turn three. Here comes Dan Pittinger, shoots out a rock and coming into three. And we have contact down the front straightaway between the 37 of Chelsea Haskins. They didn't get a number on the other car. Here they come, off turn four to the restart cones, back onto the front straightaway, green flag flies yet again here at State Line Speedway with four laps to go. Meese has the race lead, Bittinger trying desperately like he has been all night to find a way around the B-17. Down the back straightaway, Bittinger right up to the back bumper all over him as they head through three and four. Working out of four, and it's still all Meese up to this point, Bittinger throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him, trying to get him away as we have three to go in this feature. We got problems farther back, trouble in the middle of turns one and two. A couple of cars go around the yellow flag. It's gonna come right back in the final restart as they head onto the front straightaway. The green flag flies yet again. Meese jumps out to that solid car length advantage. Heinemann looking to the inside of Bittinger. Not there this time as they work off turn two. Meese still the race leader. Meese still holding off Bittinger with three to go. Soon to be two as they enter into three, working into four. 
Einman holding off Etchbriara in that third place position. But two left to go. Possible six in the area for John Neese. In the one and two, the two race leaders fling their machines through yet again. Now down the back straightaway. Again, it's like a record on repeat. Bittinger gets a great drive into the corners, but Meese gets a better drive up off corner number four. This time, white flag goes in the air. One more time around for John Meese. Can he hold off Dan Bittinger for that long? But the yellow flag is out. Uh, we have a car off the pace of the rest of the field. So we are going to have a green-white restart if we go back. Off turn four, does Bittinger have anything for me? So we're about to find out. Green and white flag are displayed here. Final lap of the night at State Line Speedway as they head through one and two for the final time. Down the back straightaway, John Meese has the race lead. Bittinger trying to drive it in deep on the high side. Running into three and four. Bittinger does not have enough. John Meese gets it done for the second time this season. Bittinger second, Holt Heidman third, and Etchviara in fourth. So John Meese gets the job done here, holding off the late charge from Bittinger, who comes across the line in second. Climbing out of the car for the second time this season, the B-17, it's John Mees. John, second time this season, you're in Victory Lane parking it. How's it feel? I feel better without all those cautions. I thought we were watching a pro model race here. Uh, got a good, uh, somebody drew me a good pill, starting up here in the fronts. Pretty key, but... Seeing 88, 32, and I know there's some heavy hitters back there. They're all over me. I get you know, back there, I don't, you know, but caution after caution, I'm like, man, this is never gonna end. Somebody's gonna pass me. Car felt great. I'm here again, I'm happy. Been having a lot of problems with it though. Axles keep popping out, so hopefully this isn't the third one. Three in a row, so. You had to hold off Dan Bittinger for most of the race. Were you doing anything special to hold him off? No. Luck. <laughs> That's it. He's good. Everybody's good up here. Everybody can win. Everybody's, you know, they say, you know, the first one's easy. Uh, it's not. You know, the, after the first one, it's all easy. It's not. These guys are working hard every day. They're trying to get faster. They're trying to, you know, beat the next guy. So, I mean, it's just the way it is. Can't get better, you know. Everybody's good up here, so. But I'd like to thank all my sponsors here: Kessel, Custom Covers, Blue Power Works, Chautauqua Removal, A Automotive, um, Kickstart Properties. I got Lido's Crescent in. I forgot these guys last time. Seasonal Impact, ICP, uh, Pest Removal, Chautauqua Cleaning. Um, Ryan Carlson Home Repairs, Showers uh, Auto Repair, Danielson Oil came on this year, uh, big help. Uh, the Green Door Tavern, uh, Precision Tree Care, uh, Tom Majulis Masonry, LD Property Maintenance. Yeah, I know I got a lot, but Mike, now you're never going to get this back. You know that, right? Um, I'd like to thank Tyler at HCP Handcraft Performance. He does a hell of a you know, tune for these guys. He's helped me out at the beginning of the season. He's helping Dan Bettinger. Uh, he's helping Holden. He's helping all the guys up front. I think all his cars finish in the top five. 